Hello, my name is Iris Scissor, and today you're going to get to know a little bit more about me. This particular Iris Scissor that we have in front of us today is a four and a half inch tungsten carbide sharp, sharp nap iris scissor. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of those identifying marks on this particular device, but keep in mind there are different variations of iris scissors out there that are common in your surgical trays. Uh, I may not have mentioned this is also a straight iris scissor that you can observe from the blade angle there that there is no angle. All right, so that's a tip off that you're looking at a straight. Now going back to this tungsten carbide, it's not uncommon in your surgical trays to see devices that have these golden ring handles or some other kind of gold on the proximal end. Uh, oftentimes you see this on your forceps, for instance, or on your pickups. Um, but almost always when you see golden on a surgical instrument, at least on the handle somewhere, that's a tip off that you're looking at a tungsten carbide instrument. However, what's uh, curious about this is the tungsten carbide is actually not on the golden handles itself, even though that's the cue oftentimes and almost always the tungsten carbide is at the working end of the instrument. So in this case of these iris scissors, the tungsten carbide is in the blade. Now the reason that you place tungsten carbide in the blade is to uh, strengthen that blade to, to give it a longer life after it's been sharpened or when it comes first from the manufacturer as a sharp medical device. As I mentioned in the intro, this particular iris scissor is a sharp sharp. That's telling you that both of your blades have a sharp tip. Okay. As you're inspecting, keep close in mind, obviously, if the action has a smooth action up and down. And as you're handling these instruments during the inspection stage, you will grow to kind of know a feel for how smooth that cut should be. And even sometimes if you can't see the damage on the blade, oftentimes you can feel the damage as you're working that scissor up and down. Okay. Now, in addition to visualizing that inspection of the sharpness, obviously you're going to want to look on the blade for any pitting or damage. But for scissors, you can and you should be testing the sharpness of your scissors with either yellow or red testing material depending on the size of the scissor that you're testing. For some of the smaller scissors, such as this particular scissor because it's not tothomic scissor, it's a good idea to be testing on that yellow testing material. Smaller scissors take yellow. As you go up the food chain for the scissor sizes, uh, you move into traditionally the red testing material. One last note that we'll make on this iris scissor in particular is, if you flip it over, you can see that little Phillips head screw. It looks like a little screw in, in the middle there. Uh, do not try this at home is the phrase that you should walk away when you see that screw because it can be tempting uh, to try to make a repair if you happen to see a scissor that has a loose screw or if that uh, cutting action is a little too smooth. Um, but keep in mind, you do not want to be making any quote unquote homemade repairs to your instruments. Only send that device out to a licensed manufacturer or a licensed repair technician to make any changes, even something as simple as tightening the screw. Uh, this particular device again is a four and a half inch nap iris scissor straight sharp sharp with tungsten carbide cutting edges thank you for tuning in today and as always keep fighting dirty